Stick with me as we talk about the elusive Edison batteries. Now that winter's here, it's time to talk about power outages. And you have to think about things like battery power. Well, have you ever heard of Edison batteries? We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about why they're the best batteries that are forgotten technology. When people decide to go off-grid, one of the major decisions they have to make is what kind of battery do they want. Now, you gotta understand, if, if you never dealt with this world like solar power and stuff, it used to be very, very expensive just to get solar panels. But these days, every few years, the solar panels are getting better and cheaper. So it's gotten the point where that's really not a problem anymore. You can get a pretty inexpensive solar power panel system that works really well. The problem has always been the batteries. The battery technology really hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, I mean, yes, there's developments out there and people doing some cool stuff, but it really hasn't hit the consumer level. It's always somebody builds their own kind of cool battery or they're really expensive. The thing is, back in the 1900s, this problem was kind of solved and uh, you'd be surprised. Now, you might have heard of these. I don't know if you know about what they are. They're called Edison batteries or nickel iron batteries. Now, I hate to call them Edison batteries because I'm not a huge fan of Edison. He pretty much uh, just repackaged and stole everybody's work around him. So I doubt he actually invented this, but it is his name. He took credit for it. What it is, is it's a nickel iron based battery. Now, normally, if you don't know much about batteries, like the kind you have in your car is a lead based system. So it's an acidic system. There's acid that goes back and forth in the battery and eventually it eats the, the metal plates out of it. So your battery dies within a few years. This is an alkaline system. So you don't have all the erosion that a uh, acid system would create. So these batteries really never erode. There are Edison batteries that are 100 years old working today. These are batteries that you can like will your kids and they're practically indestructible. They're awesome, awesome technology, but um, it was a uh, suppressed technology. See, what happened was at the turn of the last century, battery power and everybody was still trying to figure out what to do for electricity. And so all these different ideas were being tried. Nickel iron comes out and these batteries are superior. They last a lot longer. They work in cold weather. Weather doesn't affect them like regular batteries. And they um, are easy to maintain. All you have to do is really just fill them with water every once in a while. So these batteries come out and the battery companies that be do not like <laughs> this nickel iron battery because you basically buy one and you never have to buy another in your life. So they kind of buy up all the patents and just stop making them. So in the 1990s, they started to slowly resurface. People were buying these batteries that were 50 to 100 years old and repurposing them and then starting to sell them again. Eventually, about two companies come out and they come out from China, I think, and then now there's one in the US and they bring this technology back to life. The problem is um, they're very expensive batteries, but they're batteries that uh, you know will last for generations. You buy these things and you never have to buy batteries again. When you decide to go off grid and every little bit of electricity matters, your batteries are really important to you. You want them to work when you need them. Or especially even little home systems. You see people having backup power systems in their house. Like that's why I was out shooting in the snow, just so you have a battery. Now this is a really old Edison battery from I think the 40s. And it's only like 1.2 volts. The thing about Edison batteries is they run with nickel in them. And nickel uh, does not have a good surface area. It's very slick. And you need lots of surface area in order for you to have chemical reactions. So these batteries can get kind of big and heavy. One of the big holdups with nickel iron batteries is they weigh a lot and they're big. The surface area is a problem. The nickel is, like I said, smooth, so it's, it's hard to create a lot of surface area. And one of the more exciting developments is something called the nickel iron project. 
that a radio show host, Ernest Hancock, started in his garage. He had been reading about nickel iron batteries and decided to try to make one, a better one, since this technology, really nobody's messed around with it in a hundred years. What Mr. Hancock figured out was that if you could increase the surface area of the nickel, you could make these batteries much smaller and much cheaper. And as technology got better and better, they started coming out with things called uh, carbon fibers. And they're pretty much about the smallest nanoparticle you can make that you can stick things to. Um, in other words, I can take, they look like threads, these, these carbon fibers, and they're just billions upon billions of these little coils of carbon particles that you can coat with things. So if you want to uh, make these filament threads, you could take them and dip them in nickel and you'd have insane surface area with very little weight. You'd have like the size of a football field inside a little battery that you can, you know, run your car with. So if you could take that nanotechnology that's around today and somehow make it work with nickel iron, you could have a battery that lasts forever that you really could, uh, would be very inexpensive. Now at the time when Ernest was doing this project, carbon fibers were still kind of pretty new and it's not something that was easily able to make. What Ernest figured out was how to make these carbon nanotubes at home and then coat them with nickel. He went through a bunch of steps, kind of taught himself, and he made a lab in his backyard. Um, I actually went to the lab, it was pretty neat. And what happened was um, he got a working battery. It worked. But his idea was just to create the concept and then give it out to the world for free so you could learn how to make your own. And hopefully it gets to the point where solar's gotten cheap enough and wind power's gotten cheap enough that if you can just get the batteries cheap enough, we've solved a lot of problems. The idea, again, was to open source all this stuff. The big reason we don't have um, a good energy solution for the masses is because every time a cool idea comes up it gets bought out by the energy companies they throw a couple million dollars at the problem and just buy it and then sit on it and kill it they don't want anything that disrupts the flow of money and uh or they just use the government to uh force other people to stop you know they send cops to seize all your stuff that's always been the problem. So the only way we can actually have a free society with free power is to be able to put out the information so people can make it themselves cheaply from the Home Depot. And that's the game plan. These nickel iron batteries you can actually make yourself. A big push that Ernest Hancock did was to try to figure out a way to put this information out there for free that everybody could refine it, make it better, and make this thing as cheap and as efficient as possible. So that process is still going on. If you've never heard of the nickel iron battery project, I'm going to link it and you read all about the articles and watch his videos. He, uh, he puts on like, you know, he wanted kids to be interested. So he put like a wig on, like a Doc Brown wig and a, and a white jacket and, you know, like a mad scientist kind of thing and takes you through his lab for, the batteries it's it's pretty cute but the idea is to get some 12 year old kid interested in this that uh within a few years you know him and his buddies have made incredible batteries and that's the idea is to inspire generation next to solve this problem i think a good way to the future is to go back to the past and recycle something and make it a lot better I am really hoping that this information finds the right person that knows how to build these things and wants to and can take Ernest Hancock's work and go forward with it so I can easily make it myself at home or I can just buy it cheaply on eBay. Anyway, the idea is out there. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. I know there's all kinds of other cool battery technology coming out and feel free to talk about it and comment about it with other people. Read what they have to say about it. But if you hadn't really focused on Edison batteries, take a minute and look this stuff over. It's really cool technology. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks. 
Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign up at terranlupo.com and all that's free.